Welcome to Aussie Vision. It's Kirakis here. And today we're joined by an artist who wowed us in Turin with his magnificent performance at Eurovision 2022 for Australia. It's Sheldon Riley. Welcome back. You look incredible. How are you? Thank you. Just a little change, huh? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Now, I just want to say congratulations on the new release of your song, Insane. Um, it's the first original song released since uh, Not The Same. Um, yes. Now, I have to say that Insane is a very deep and complex song, along with the intense strings, and there's a lot of drama in it and a very powerful chorus. Um, I recall, and I'm correct me if I'm wrong, that I think we heard you perform it in Sydney before you headed off to Turin last year. I did, I did. It was so, actually, yeah, I mean dark and emotional too far from the from the eurovision track yeah i did it was actually it was it was very much in the running to be the eurovision right. song. yeah um i think the the australian delegation just like to hear everything completely okay. finished before they start to make choices but um yeah well what's the meaning uh behind insane um uh, i know you wrote the song during uh the pandemic i believe when we yeah. were in lockdown as well um is that right yeah, sure did. It's it's essentially just about loving someone who ultimately only loves you when it's convenient for them. And you know, you love this person, they love you, they hate you, and it, you you can't really decide that, but you still allow that person to do that too. I mean, look, my my songs are always very um emotional and and the lyrics are always heavy and the vocals are always insane, but um this one's it, it was I'm excited for this one. It's it's not so personal. I think it's something that, you know, it's not something that a very niche group of people have gone through, like say not the same um, for its true meaning. It's something that I think we've all felt. We've all, we've all wanted to be loved by someone who just didn't want to um, give us that time of day, but we still push anyway. So, yeah. I have to say your music video is incredible. And even in those promo shots uh, that we've seen, um, it's a it's a side of you that we haven't seen before. It's like a, a very raw, but yet empowering, yet vulnerable. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your 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 look? Well, it's not so pretty. I mean, it is pretty, but it's not so pretty, right? It's 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 a lot more. It's a lot more primal. I mean, this was the same thought that I had. So the music video, it's um, it's all shot in one take, and it's supposed to be this kind of what's going on in my head kind of thing. I didn't really want anyone to, you know, narrow it down and be like, you know, he's in a jungle or he's in a city or he's at a beach. Like it, it's supposed to feel almost like another planet where it's just me. And it's kind of like this process of, of insanity, but done in, you know, a very animalistic cinematic way. Um, I mean, this is, it's I, the one thing that was important to me was to stick to the original vision of it as well. So when we first started thinking about, the Eurovision song, this one came to mind and I always wanted the video to match what I would have actually done on stage. So the video in one take is exactly what would have happened at Eurovision. I mean, uh, Turin was, um, there was lots of different things that happened there. It may not have been exactly the same, but that's kind of the vibe. Like I, I wanted it to to um, to play out like that, but I mean, you know, we did not the same. And now I finally get to play around with this one. Well, uh, as you said, the music video was um, shot in a single take. Um, how was how was that experience doing that? Like, was it quite difficult? Because I know you directed the music video as well, and you had full yeah, full yeah. Um, creative control over it. How how was that whole process? I loved it. I I, I hate music videos. Hey, I, <laughs> I really don't like the thousand takes and cuts and edits. But this one was good. I just treated it like a Eurovision performance I know that sounds psycho but I, I did like just st straight you know start to finish the only thing that wasn't Eurovision about it was that it goes for four minutes not three so um yeah I just treated it as a performance which I think and when people watch it I feel like you get all those different phases of emotion that I put into my performances like I would you know organically it didn't feel like acting it felt very um very much like how I would perform it if I was doing it live now, the outfit that you wear in your music video um, is out of this world. Now, I know it's made out of meters and meters of ethically sourced human yes. hair. Uh, yes. Can you talk to us about the inspiration behind it? I, I believe you created this yourself as well. I sure did. I sure did. I've been inspired by lots of different... I actually went and saw, a, saw the McQueen exhibit and saw um, things made of horse hair and everything. I'm like, it's just crazy. But 
I mean, really want to focus on ethically sourced because we spent a lot of money to make sure that this thing was done properly and it was made right. And it was, um, it was, it's about 60 meters of hair um, at, at 22 inch. It's a lot of hair, a lot, a lot of weight of hair, but I don't know. I, I like to, it's, oh, it's going to be something that I keep forever. And it's, um, you know what I'm like, I like to make a moment. <laughs> I, I, it's uh, fashion's just as important as the music here, but yeah, it was, it, it took forever to make. Hey, it just took so long. You but always have moves. great attention to detail and it's always great to see as well. So. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you are recently part of uh, Brooks National um, OJ preview party um, yeah. in Melbourne and you did get to perform to Eurovision fans. Um, how did it feel performing for the Aussie fans? Just so good. I mean, I say this to every gig now and every every show that I do, wherever I am in the world, I say that Eurovision's kind of ruined my life a bit because no one gets as hyped and as excited as a Eurovision audience. <laughs> and I just get so bummed out after things now because they're never as hyped up as what a Eurovision audience is. So to be in that room, especially, I mean, after Eurovision, I'm seeing not the same everywhere. And I mean, people are listening and it's, it's, it's sad, but it, I feel like the, the Eurovision audience are the only people who are jumping up and down while I'm singing not the same. So <laughs> it, was, it was really exciting to be back in the, in the Euroverse again. Um, yeah, it's so much fun. And also, I don't know if you agree, but I feel like just the the growth in Aussie fans for Eurovision is, is really starting to thicken up as well. I don't think there's been as good turnouts ever for this kind yeah. of thing. This is, it was, it was packed. The Melbourne show was absolutely packed. I'm not too sure about the other, other states, but Melbourne was packed. It was great. I think it's just, do you know what? I think it's, um, I, I'm really glad that I, more than glad, I'm, I'm ecstatic that the opportunity came and I, I, you know, got to represent the country. That's like, uh, it's unbelievable. I'm, I'm so grateful for it every day, but I'm, I think the thing I'm most grateful for is that I got to really push the fact that Australians just do Eurovision big like we don't play around like I know a lot of people say we shouldn't even be there so when we go in we push hard and I mean I think I was really nervous because you know I'm an independent artist I didn't have the budget that everyone else had I mean we left there with thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of debt but we are so proud of it and we have we've worked our butts off for it and we you know it's it's just been incredible to be such a big part of you know the eurovision world and and you know doing and you know, really reaching the caliber of what other artists got to do as well do you know what i mean i feel like we've got such a a standard to hit as australians going in um it's i'm excited to see what voyage is going to do to be honest <laughs> it's going to be incredible well, I just want to go back to that, that Melbourne show. We did see you um, catch up with Brooke as well, uh, who represented Ireland last year, um, and you got to spend some time together. Uh, how was it um, catching up with Brooke again? It, it's great. I mean, she's a she's a fun <laughs> time. Hey, she's yeah, she she's, really is. She's, she's crazy. I, I think what I loved most is that I could barely understand her, not not because of the accent. I actually think it's her. <laughs> speaks so so fast and then you add the accent on top it's crazy but um she's incredible she's such a fun a little pocket rocket and uh i think what was so fun was when she would perform to the audiences at uh on her tour and she would talk to them no one had a clue what she was saying but she was just giggling everyone else was having a good time but damn she can sing as well i feel like that's <laughs> which did not show off how good she could be oh, singing yeah. gaga and 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 lorraine in the dressing room like Jesus, you're good. She's so, so good. So, yeah, it's always fun. Eurovision's such a family, right? I feel like it's it's nice just to reconnect. Well, it is almost uh, Eurovision time again, and um, yeah. you kind of did touch on this before, but I'm still going to ask you. Um, it's been a, it's almost now a year since you did compete in Turin. Um, yeah. How does it feel like looking back to Eurovision experience a year later? Like. Is it is there like an odd feeling like seeing it happen and you were there last year? Like, how does it feel from the perspective of an artist? Yeah, I it, I was saying to my friend the other day, I think it finally hit me last, it was last week. I was like, whoa, I really, I really did that. All these memories started popping up as they as you know, does on your iPhone, it just starts popping up. And I was like, we did so much. It was such a it's such a fever dream. It all goes, it all goes so fast. And um I 
it's completely changed my life. I'm I'm so I'm so proud of what we did. I mean, I'm I just can't believe I got to do it. To be honest with you, it's just it's I'm I'm still I'm still shocked. But I think just the whole idea that it happened only really just hit in like last week. I was like, is it really, really happened? Um, yeah, I'm, I still smile about it all the time. I, we didn't go small. I think that's something I, I often forget. I didn't, right? I, I said to my partner, Zach, I was like, we really went for it. Like, I know it's something I've planned since the day I found out what Eurovision was, but like, you know, for, you know, a, so, I mean, most people have a team of 20 to 50. I mean, it was, it was really just Zach and I. So um, we went, we went pretty big. We, we went crazy. So yes, yeah, still super proud. Yeah, we're also incredibly proud of what you achieved last year. And yeah, the performance staging was all big and it's very on brand for Australia, which is what we've been doing nearly every year. So it's great to see that you continued that as well, Sheldon. So yeah, we really appreciate everything you did. Thank you. Now, are you heading to Liverpool this year? Um, we, I was going see you to. Oh, okay. We were, we were going to, we're going to, but we're just, we're very deep in a very secret project right now okay. that's happening. So it's just, it just was not possible. But what is exciting is that, I mean, I'm, I'm really excited to wake up again at 5 a.m. in the uh, yep, morning. Yep. <laughs> I mean, it was, I didn't realize until, do you know what it was? I was sitting in my hotel in Turin and it was the first semifinal because we're in semi two. Yeah, I think that's how it went. Yeah, I was in semi two and we were sitting in the hotel bedroom and we're like, what are we going to do? And I was like, oh my God, Eurovision's on. And all like it, it, it literally just like clicked. We're like, oh, we're watching it, right? So we're turning it on. We're trying to figure out the, you know, the Italian TV and we've turned it on and, and it like, and it starts. And I'm like, I'm watching Eurovision live at, at night. At normal this time. Is yep. Yeah. Weird, this is such a weird concept. I was like, this makes sense. Like you could have a proper party here and do this. So, um, yeah, that was that was kind of sorry, sidetracked, but it was just an interesting thought that I had the other day. But um, I'm going to a pancake party. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that should be exciting. Uh, have you heard uh, any uh, songs this year? Um, oh, do you have any favorites? And what do you think of Voyager's song? We'll love Definitely. to know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Voyage is great. I'm ex- I'm excited for. I'm I I always get so tripped out because I mean, you know, as we all know, you can't play instruments at Eurovision so I mean for the ones singing up there I know the pressure but it's just I don't know I I just find it so funny when I see because I know they can play they can play so damn well and it's I don't know if I think it's just an inside thing in my head that makes me laugh but they're they're so incredible I had a call with them with Danny before they left and I'm I'm so pumped for them they're going to be incredible and they're they're going off at the at the pre-party they saw the one in Spain they're they're incredible. I wish them all the best. And Andrew as well. Um, oh, yes, yes, that's right. He's not right from Australia, but we're excited for him as well. You know, he's just a big part of the family as well. But, I mean, look, since the start of my Eurovision dream, I've had a number one from every year. Um, I, I fell so deeply in love with with um, Kate Miller, Heike. And then after then, I was like, every single year, I'm going to watch so intensely. And I, I don't... No, if it's just my little neurodiverse brain, but I get so attached to the songs every year. Just the one, just one every single year that it's the only one that I play. So it was Zero Gravity, which was what that was 2019, right? And then 2020 was uh, Jean Terre's song. And then Voila 2021. And then uh, everyone knows how much I love Cornelia just over and over. I, I only listened to her song the whole way there, but. I do a post every year as well. Um, I mean, if Lorraine doesn't win, I'd be very, very <laughs> surprised. She's my heart and all. I'm, I'm obsessed with her. Even, you know, remove Euphoria. Remove yeah, the whole yeah. concept of her being what, in my eyes, is just like the ruler of Eurovision. She's uh, she's not the queen. Conchita's the queen of Eurovision. She's the <laughs> ruler of Eurovision. That How insane is that song i don't know if you like it or not but oh, I, no, yeah I, it's my it's my favorite i was hooked from the first time i watched it and that staging oh, and everything she gives it oh it's incredible staging. is it sasha jean baptiste am i crazy yes is no, that, it is oh, yes <laughs> I, I didn't know she was yeah amazing it's it's just what an insane before i actually got to um 
I got to watch her live in Amsterdam when I performed at the at the Het Groot Festival. Um, what an insane voice. I mean, some people you watch at Eurovision, you love them because they're them or because the song's great or because the outfit's amazing or just because it's memorable. Lorraine is just everything and such a such a dedicated I don't know I'm obsessed so and uh Finland as well obviously and Norway it's it's and Austria oh there's so many but yeah Lorraine stole my heart it's just incredible did, did you get to meet Lorraine when you were in Amsterdam I or? didn't she was oh, no. she, <laughs> she was um she was hard to track down all oh, right she, but I have to be honest as well though I actually think the Amsterdam audience at that festival was bigger and better than actual Eurovision. Oh, they yep, were yep. insanity. They love it. And they really do. The security at Amsterdam was off the chain. You could get, keep going, there were more winners there than there were, you know, just Eurovision fan favorites. They were, they were, it was packed. I mean, it's crazy walking down the hallway and I was getting a bottle of water and just Duncan Lawrence walked straight past and Netta's like puffing up her skirt next to the <laughs> elevator. And um and OJ OJ three and E are just there, are just warming up in harmony. And I'm just like, what is what is actually happening? My brain's about to explode. But um, <laughs> well, I mean, look, if I was Lorena, I'd be very much um, a secret ninja, gummy yeah. in and out as well. <laughs> <laughs> no, she she probably is very sought after everywhere she goes. So yeah, yeah. totally understandable. Now you did mention earlier that you're working on a secret project, and obviously it's a yeah. secret. We don't know what it, that's about. But I am going to ask you, uh, we've heard um, you, well, we've seen you talk about uh, an upcoming album, like how yeah. preparations going for that? It's, um, it's going really good. It's a big part of why I'm sticking around as well. Okay. It's, yeah. it's good. I mean, I, I mean, if you're fresh off from Eurovision, you want to release as much music as possible. I really needed, I really, really needed the break um, from just focusing on, myself i was happy just to work as hard as i can but just take a second um i think not the same was as much as i loved it it was just it was a lot it was it was it was a lot so i just needed a second before i could jump back into the studio again but i'm working with this incredible uh, producer his name's uh, dorian west and he has completely blown my mind like cinematic genius absolute genius but it's it's it it sounds ridiculous i'm recording with real strings for the first time like in full you know quartets and orchestras i've only you know ever worked with just the one person so this is it's it's a big project and i want it to be right and the concepts are very strong i'm putting in so much time from now on everything that i put out I'm I'm putting everything of myself into it's it's I love what I do I love what I create and there's no one else who who is doing it the way that I'm doing it and I'm really proud of that so yeah giving it everything well the insane, insane is out which is huge but um do you have any other plans in the next few months or any performances yeah, yeah, we can expect like what, what can you yeah, tell there's us lots of travel this year so you're going to see me here, there, and everywhere. Um, planning our own shows, planning our own things that are all happening. So Wait, a national to tour, possibly as well, or perhaps all different perhaps. things happening. Okay. <laughs> perhaps. Yeah, I mean, look, once the once the album is out, a thousand percent. But it's not just it's not just the touring show that I go and you know sing a few songs. It's it's going to be special. It's um, I'm planning a full immersive. It's 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 what you would like to hope would come out of waiting so long for the Sheldon Riley experience. Um, it's going to be really beautiful. Well, very intrigued and we cannot wait. Thank you so much for talking to us once again, Sheldon. It's always a pleasure. And again, congrats on the release of Insane. Enjoy Eurovision and uh, the pancakes <laughs> this year. Yeah, and and um, you enjoy being over there for your first Eurovision. That's insane. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I cannot wait. A big tick on my bucket list. Um, yeah, okay. looking forward to that. And um, may Lorraine win, hopefully. <laughs> <That's my point>. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very thank much, Sheldon. Thank you. Yeah.